These are notes on chapter 8, which is about energy, enzymes, and uh, free energy types of reactions. So remember that living cells have things going on all the, all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. They have lots and lots, thousands of chemical reactions occurring all the time. Those chemical reactions re remove energy or release energy from some, uh, some compounds and apply energy to perform different kinds of work in other, in other cases. Um, some of them also convert energy to light, like bioluminescence, like you see in some um, marine creatures. But the point is that there's always some kind of energy exchange going on by means of chemical reactions in the cell. Um, the laws of thermodynamics definitely apply to um, the organism's metabolism. Remember that this is the sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in an organism. And it is something that, that comes up from interactions between molecules within the cell. Uh, it's not present if you just have the molecules themselves, but it has to do with the interaction of those processes in the cell that produces this emergent quality of metabolism. Um, there are various metabolic pathways in organisms, and that's a series of reactions that are catalyzed by specific enzymes along, at each step along the way. And oftentimes you'll, you'll start off with one molecule and then there's a first reaction that produces an intermediate compound. That part's catalyzed by an enzyme. The second part of the reaction, catalyzed by a separate enzyme, produces the third the intermediate or the second intermediate compound undergoing another reaction with a different enzyme finally producing a product. Some um, catabolic or uh, some me metabolic processes occur uh, in many more steps than this is just a simplified diagram to show you that you have a series of steps that are occurring along the way. So we have two main kinds of pathways. We have catabolic which are mo pathways in which a, an organ a molecule is broken down into smaller or simpler compounds and anabolic ones. Anabolic ones are, are the opposite. They're ones that are using energy to build, build more complex molecules. The cell respiration is um, an example of a catabolic pathway. There are others as well, other kinds of energy releasing reactions occurring within the cell. They're releasing energy because they're breaking down larger molecules into smaller ones. The anabolic pathways use energy to build more complex molecules, and so uh, protein synthesis is an example of that. Also, photosynthesis is a process of that, although there's also a little bit of catabolism going on with photosynthesis as well, as you'll see when we talk about that. But the study of how organisms handle all this energy stuff is called bioenergetics, and there's a whole field of study about bioenergetics. We're not going to study it that deeply, but we are going to talk about it in general. So energy, remember, is the capacity to cause change or the capacity to do work. And there are lots of different forms of energy, as you know. Um, kinetic energy, motion, heat energy, that's from the random movement of molecules, potential energy by, uh, for, from position or from its uh, structure. Chemical energy that is available um, in a chemical reaction and then you can also remember that you can convert energy from one form to another and this makes it be beneficial for organisms because although heat energy may not be the best thing for cells they might be able to change that to a different form that can that can be utilized to do work within the cell here we have several different energy um, things going on with the with the divers on the platform the diver of course on the top of the platform has more potential energy than the one down here in the water because of his position. The action, the movement of diving is changing that potential energy into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And then we have here the diver climbing up the ladder that's using the kinetic energy of muscle movement to gain potential energy um, as the, as the um, swimmer moves up higher. <coughs> Thermodynamics is that study of these energy transformations. Um, Keep in mind that isolated systems that are isolated from their surroundings and or orbit systems, you can transfer matter and energy back and forth within the system and between the system and its surroundings. Organisms definitely are open systems because there's always some interaction of these various kinds of um, energy and matter transfers occurring between the organism and its environment. 
the first law of thermodynamics is also called the principle of conservation of energy, and it's just the statement that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can only be transformed or transferred from one place to another. So that's just that's one of those things that you learn about um, much earlier than you've ever heard the term thermodynamics, but you understand the process and the concept. The second law of thermodynamics has to do with entropy. Remember, entropy has to do with the disorder of the universe, and the tendency is for things to go from more ordered to less ordered. Okay, So what happens it, with the second law is that when you have energy transformations, some of that energy is unusable, and often it's lost as heat, Okay, and that's because of the second law of thermodynamics. So here we have the uh, the bear eating the fish. Okay, he's taking in the chemical energy from the fish and transforming it into various kinds of energy within his body. Uh, some more different kind of chemical energy. Some of it's kinetic energy because of movement. Some of it has to do with potential energy that's found in molecules and so forth. And then by uh, running and giving off heat and carbon dioxide and, and water, this, this exemplifies the second law of thermodynamics because you have the more complex molecules here that were found in the fish being released as simpler, more, more, um, more numerous molecules um, into the universe, so that, incre that increases the entropy of the system. The, the big thing to realize about living cells is they, they, organize, they convert those organized forms of energy to heat, and heat is going to be released into the environment. Uh, another thing that we need to talk about is the fact that we have some processes that are spontaneous and others are not spontaneous, and it has to do with free energy. Okay, For a process to happen without an input of energy, it has to increase entropy of the universe. It, if it doesn't increase entropy, then it is not going to be spontaneous. It's going to require an energy input into the system. Um, in terms of living things, remember we have ordered structures from less ordered materials, and that may seem contrary to or opposite to the second law of thermodynamics, but what you have to realize is that you are talking about the increase in the entropy of the universe and not just of the organism. So even though you have um, more take in simpler molecules and make more complex ones when you're when you're talking about an organism, it's still there's, there are transformations that are occurring that are actually adding to the entropy of the universe. It doesn't violate the second law, okay? Because even though the entropy may decrease in the organism itself, the universe's total entropy increases. One way to predict whether a reaction is going to occur spontaneously is to look at the free energy change of the reaction. Okay, that, because that's an important thing to know in terms of understanding how the processes in the cell are working. So you have to look at the energy changes that occur in the chemical reactions. And that is called free energy change, or delta G. The free energy is the energy that is available to do work when everything else is, is uniform, like the temperature and pressure. And so inside a cell, the temperature and the pressure are going to be relatively stable. And so we're looking just at what is released that can do work. The change in free energy here is related to the change in enthalpy, okay? That's the change in total energy, enthalpy, and the change in entropy, which is here, and the temperature in Kelvin. So delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. The processes that have a negative delta G that increase entropy, the, the entropy is going up, doesn't matter whether the temperature goes up or not, um, is, but if, as you increase this, that's going to have a tendency to make this negative in its, uh, in its sign. Spontaneous processes are ones that are going to be harnessed to perform work in the cells because they are things that will occur and release energy for the cells to use. Um, this is a measure of the st system's instability or its tendency to change to a more stable state. So you're looking at things going from uh, an unequal situation to one of equilibrium. When the process is moving toward equilibrium, um, then that is when it can, be, can perform work, as it's moving toward equilibrium. It has to be spontaneous, which means delta G has to be negative in value, and it's going to be moving toward equilibrium. 
So when we look at the divers again in the water and compare that to cells or various reactions in the cell, we can see in this first state we've got higher free energy, high G, okay? It's less stable and there's a greater capacity work for work because the potential energy is greater. In that change, then the free energy that is here is going to decrease as the diver dives or as the molecules move from, high, from higher concentration to lower concentration. But the system is going to become more stable and the energy that's released here can be used to do work. And then you'll end up in the final state with less free energy but it's more stable and has less capacity to do work. So we can relate the divers to the molecules that are diffusing from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration or a chemical reaction where you have a compound like glucose that is broken down into smaller molecules like carbon dioxide and water. The big thing to realize about free energy is the, the final kind of summative statement here is that, that the free energy that is released can be applied to the chemistry of the processes of life. And so we'll talk more in future, um, in future videos about how that happens.